I know what it's like. You want your chorus to shine and get it stuck in their minds, but you're having a hard time. talking about choruses and I'm going to show you how to get yours to be so catchy that it gets stuck in people's heads every single time. To get started, let's talk about one of the most important ingredients for writing a chorus that sticks, and that is simplicity. A lot of people think they need to write something super complex to stand out, when in reality, the simpler it is, the easier it is for someone to remember it. To show you the difference, I'm going to play you two melodies, and I want you to tell me which one is easier to remember. Do you see the difference? The first one is easy to hum and it sticks, while the other one is far too complicated, and thus, it isn't very memorable. So when you're writing your chorus, always think about how easy it would be for someone to sing it back to you. And if it's something a child could hum after one listen, then you're on the right track. Now that we've covered simplicity, let's dive into another key element for a catchy chorus, memorable lyrics. The words you choose are just as important as the melody when it comes to sticking in a listener's head. You don't want to use overly complicated phrases or abstract ideas. The simpler and more direct the lyrics, the better chance they'll resonate with the listener. To illustrate this idea, I'm going to play two short snippets about heartbreak. This first version is just bad, with lyrics that are overly complex, not relatable, and thus not catchy. I despise the emotions that I had for you. You shattered my affections and that was a Responsibility for making me feel melancholy. For making me feel melancholy. Now compare that to this example. It's the exact same song communicating the same exact message, but the lyrics are memorable and relatable. My heart, then you broke it in two. You'll blame it on me like you always do. And now we're broken, lost, and blue. Now we're broken, lost, and blue. You see the difference? The second version is clear, direct, and much easier to remember, while the first one, frankly, sucks. When writing your chorus lyrics, focus on what's relatable, clear, and emotionally resonant. The more people can connect with it, the more likely they are to remember it. Next up, let's talk about one of the simplest but most effective techniques for a catchy chorus. Repetition. To prove how effective repetition is, I'm going to get the phrase astronaut orange microwave pants stuck in your head. This is undoubtedly one of the stupidest things you'll ever hear, but by listening to it, you'll see just how effective repetition can be. Astronaut orange microwave pants. Astronaut orange microwave pants. Astronaut orange microwave pants. Astronaut orange microwave pants. I'm sorry I had to put you through that, but right now you're probably thinking, Astronaut orange microwave pants. And that's because if you repeat anything enough times, people will remember it. That being said, the trick is to do it in a way that feels intentional and not overdone like astronaut orange microwave pants. I won't do it again. So let's say you've got a chorus with a simple melody, memorable lyrics, and strong repetition. Now it's time to think about the production elements that can take it to the next level and make it even more catchy. 
One of the most crucial elements to achieving this is a solid backbeat. The melody and lyrics are important, but the groove behind them can make all the difference in how the chorus feels and sticks. To show you what I mean, I'm gonna turn that broken, lost, and blue piano example I played earlier into a modern pop anthem. I think it worked beautifully stripped down as a piano ballad, but watch how well it works when we build a killer backbeat behind it. I hate myself for loving you. To turn this into a catchy pop chorus, let's start with a simple drum beat. To strengthen it, let's add some additional percussion to give it even more momentum. Now let's replace that original ballad piano with a cool electric piano, and let's play the chords in a way that drives the beat. To fill out the low end, we're gonna bring in some bass. Let's stay on those root notes and make sure we're playing along closely with the kick drum. A strong backbeat like this gives your chorus energy and movement, and it doesn't need to be complex. It just needs to lock in with the melody and give the listener something to move to. And if you're interested in learning how to craft full productions like this and record your own music at home, you should know that I cover all of that in my course, Spare Bedroom Studio. It's designed to get you to start producing your own music at home, and it's currently on sale for just 99 bucks. Link in the description if you wanna check that out. Now, it's always a good idea to elevate your chorus's vocal melody by adding harmonies. Harmonies add a ton of depth and richness to your melody, making it feel fuller and more emotionally engaging. To prove it, I'm going to add a simple parallel harmony to this chorus. A parallel harmony is when you sing the exact same melody, but you shift it up or down to a different note in the scale. It's one of the easiest types of harmonies you can add, but it makes a tremendous difference. I hate myself for loving you. You took my heart, then you broke it in two. You'll blame it on me like you always do. Now we're broken, lost, and blue. Now we're broken, lost, and blue. Notice how the harmony adds a whole new dimension to that melody. It makes it feel a whole lot bigger and a lot more catchy. To give your chorus more personality and to make it more interesting, you're going to need to add texture. All this really means is you're going to layer in additional instruments that fill out the sound even more. To illustrate this, we're going to add two things, some staccato funk guitar and a synth lead. The staccato guitar will give the chorus a sharper, more rhythmic feel, while the synth lead is going to provide a bit of color and help fill the spaces between the vocal lines. These additions are going to be relatively subtle, but listen to the difference that it makes. You can immediately hear how those additional elements help bring the chorus to life, making everything feel more dynamic, exciting, and catchy. If you'd like a more in-depth look at layering, then you need to check out this video right here, where I do a deep dive on how to layer your recordings to create a full, more textured sound. I'll catch you over there.